Texas. And then inaugurated her and inducted her into the Cowgirl Hall of Fame. Now, to me, she looks like one of those mean, feisty, rebellious patients. She's got her thumbs in her belt, her shoulders are back, her chin is up. You just imagine her doctor saying to her, Connie, I need you to give up salt now. You're 101. I, I got to worry about your blood pressure. Connie, I, I really need you to give up eggs and red meat and chicken skin and, and dairy products and go to margarine and boneless, skinless chicken breast. And I want you to eat tofu instead of red meat. And, and I need you to, in fact, use egg beaters instead of eggs and use margarine instead of butter. And Connie's going to ponder for a minute and then say, ah! <laughs> Doc, I've been using salt and eating butter and red meat and eggs and chicken skin before your barn. I ain't going to give them up now. Let's give her a hoo ah hoo <laughs> Okay, this is kind of a cute one. These guys were in the Guinness World Book of Records a year ago, May of 2005. Percy and Florence Aerosmith in Hereford, England. And they were put in the Guinness World Book of Records, not because of their age, but because they'd been married to each other for 80 years. When the Guinness Book of World Records asked them what their secret was, she said she drank a glass of red wine for breakfast and had a shot of whiskey before bed. And he said, well, I guess I can render it down to two words. And, and boy, they whipped out their pens and they were ready for this profound two words. And they said, well, what is it? And he said, yes, ma'am. This little gal here, Elizabeth Israel from the Caribbean island of Dominica, back in January of 2001, turned 126. This is a birthday announcement, not an obituary. Turned 126. And when she was asked, Elizabeth, what do you attribute your health and your longevity to? She said, I grew up eating food grown without chemical fertilizer. Now, what do you think her grandmother and her mother used as fertilizer in their gardens? Wood, wood ashes. You got it. What are wood ashes? Plant minerals that are left when you burn away the carbon of the wood. Amen. <laughs> hoo -ah. Changing pace here a little bit. In April of 1990, the World Health Center and the, the Center for Disease Control did a survey in the top 32 industrialized nations. They said out of the top 32 industrialized nations, the United States ranked 17th in the world in health and longevity. Now, we spend more money for health care than all the other nations in the world put together. There's 92 nations. We spend more money for health care than the other 91. And yet, in April of 1990, we ranked 17th. And Japan was number one. Let's give them a hoo for being number one. hoo 79.1. We were 75. Well, 10 years later, when they redid the study, Japan maintained number one at 74.5, but they had dropped five years four point something years they dropped but they still maintain number one but America dropped from 17th to 24th because we went from 75 to 70 in that 10 year period from April of 1990 to June of 2000 well five years later in August of 2005 the World Health Organization Center for Disease Control did another survey and they published this in Newsweek magazine I love this special edition summer of 2005 it was on the stands until August 2005 the future of medicine your health in the 21st century and they talked about new treatments. These are theoretical treatments, not existing ones for cancer, Alzheimer's, diabetes. You know, they wanted more money for donations. And then in the article number one, on page 10, there's this wonderful little paragraph. It said, America has built the world's highest high-tech medicine system in the world. I don't think we can argue with that. Uh, surgeons don't even do surgery anymore. Robots do it, just like car assembly plants. Robots do most of the bone surgery now because they make so many mistakes in hip replacement and shoulder replacement surgery. They anesthetize you and then they put you under this robot and the robot cuts your bone off and sticks the a new joint in there. And the robot does it all now because it's much more accurate than a human being. Uh, the doctor's in the back room drinking beer and sucking on a cigarette while the robot's doing the surgery. <laughs> the sentence goes on to say, and yet the nation, meaning America, now ranks 46th in longevity. Now, there's 45 other countries whose peoples live longer than us. Well, last year, in 2005, the entire world spent $2.7 trillion for health care. And out of that $2.7 trillion the world spent, we alone spent $1.9 trillion, more than two-thirds. And we rank 46th in the world. Our health care system sucks, would be a kind way of putting it. You're not getting the bang for the buck. And you, not a single one of you in this room, would put up with that in any other industry. You would not put up with this in any other industry. It's time for us to be the Home Depot of health care. People are looking for it. <laughs> and then even worse, it goes on and says, and 41 other countries, including Cuba, for God's sakes, have achieved lower rates of infant mortality. They have a higher rate of babies surviving the first year and being born alive than we do. Cuba! Think about that. A poor, non-industrialized, communist nation does a better job of live births and first-year survivability of our babies than us. Whose fault is that? No, it's the medical system's fault. It's the medical doctor's fault. It's the pediatrician's fault. It's the OBGYN's fault. Now, there's things we can do immediately. They're going to be fun, and you'll love to do them, and you will do them. You'll start tonight. I guarantee you. It's just so easy. There's some things you won't like to change, and you're going to drag your toes and say, well, Doc, isn't there anything else I could change? I don't want to give that one up. So I'm going to show you one of each, and you'll get kind of a clue. 
This was out of the British Medical Journal, which is the equivalent of the Journal of the American Medical Association. This was uh, December 23rd, 1997, and it was a big study, a big, huge study on uh, more than 1,000 men between the ages of 45 and 59. Remember, this is the British Medical Journal. This is not a comic book or a newspaper even. They said, frequent sex helps men live longer. Woo! hoo -ah! <laughs> Those men who had sex twice a week live 50% longer than those who have sex only once a month. So ladies, if you have a keeper, well, that's a keeper. If the guy you want to keep, you know how to keep him. If you have a dumpster, <laughs> you want to drop kick that sucker someplace without going to jail, you know how to accomplish it, right? Well, this study came out the same month, December 4th, though, a couple of weeks early, the sex one, 1997. This was a study that was actually uh, started in 1990, but they didn't report it until 1997. What they did was look at the uh, longevity of people county by county in the United States. I mean, they went county by county and calculated the longevity, and they did it color coding. The people who were the longest lived people in America in the upper Midwest and the Plain States, we're talking about eastern Montana, north and south Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, northern Missouri, eastern Nebraska, and Kansas. These are the longest lived people in America in the upper Midwest and the Plain States. The shortest lived people in America come from the southeast part of the United States, the old south, if you will, from Chesapeake Bay down to central Texas. And you can just see the classic demarcation. The people in the upper Midwest and the Plain States are in blue and dark purple, and the ones in the old south are in yellow, orange, and red. There's a very distinct demarcation. And this in the old south is called the heart attack, stroke, and cancer belt of America. How many have ever heard that phrase before? Yeah, in the southeast part of the United States, this is a cancer, heart attack, and stroke belt of America. The people in the upper Midwest and the Plain States live 20 years longer than the people in the South. 20 years longer. They have the same insurance. They have the same medications, the same idiot doctors, the same hospitals. Got the same. And yet the people in the upper Midwest and the Plain States live 20 years longer. What's the difference? Well, the people in the upper Midwest and the Plain States primarily, there's exceptions, of course, but primarily, at least historically and culturally in those areas, they cook everything by roasting and stewing. How do people cook in the Old South? Frying. There is fried potatoes and fried fish and fried chicken and chicken fried steak and fried green tomatoes and fried okra and fried hush puppies. I mean, it's been alleged that people in the Old South even fry water. <laughs> and because of the free radicals and the trans fatty acids that are created by frying, the rate of cancer and heart attack and stroke is higher. And so if you do nothing else but never again after leaving this convention, Never again, ever, ever, ever put a french fry or anything fried in your mouth. You will add 20 healthful years to your life. Hoo-ah! And you'll save a lot of money. And cleaning up your home, it's a lot easier to clean up your home when you've stewed as opposed to frying. So you're going to save a lot of money and you'll add 20 healthful years to your life if you never again eat anything fried. Goodbye churches. Goodbye Popeye. Goodbye french fry. I mean, I can go into McDonald's and have a nice sandwich and a salad now. I don't eat the french fries. I don't, I don't drink the soft drinks. You can go to McDonald's, have a nice meal, but you don't want to eat the fried stuff. That, that's what the dangerous part. You know, my tape, Dead Doctors Don't Lie, doctors were always angry with me because they said doctors only live to be 58. So they redid their own study. And to make a long story short, they came out five years later, and all the medical journals, they, Wallach lied. <laughs> he lied. He wasn't right. Doctors don't live to be 58. Like Wallach said, they live to be 56. <laughs> I missed it by two years. So they don't bother me on that one anymore. And they were obligated to publish it because somebody had donated the money for the study. So why do we listen to a group of people whose average lifespan is 56 on longevity? Oh, that's not very bright. What do doctors die from? Diabetes, heart disease, stroke, cancer. Hello. <laughs> My favorite doctor obituaries are the fitness doctors, the sports medicine doctors who die at 38 while jogging. I love the ones who are cardiologists. The, they teach cardiology at Harvard Medical School and die at 48 of a heart attack. Why do we listen to those people? Well, they're, they're, they're doctors. Well, there's general contractors who have licenses from the state to, to build buildings and bridges and roads. Yet people still go to Home Depot and paint their own house and retile their own house and fix a loose board on a porch. It's time, folks. People still go to doctors because they don't know that there's options available. Who's going to tell them there's options? We are! <laughs> okay. I love this. U.S. News World Report, January, February 2005, a little over a year ago. This isn't me, guys. This is U.S. News World Report. Who needs doctors? Your future physician might not be an MD and you may be better off. Hoo-ah! <laughs> 
cover article, a U.S. News World Report last week, and I apologize for not having the slide. How many of you saw the, the Time magazine for last week? The cover has a picture of a medical doctor in his white coat with a little doctor pin on his stethoscope, laying in a hospital bed with scalpels and, and tweezers and tongs and all kinds of things coming at him, and he's in terror. The one thing that doctors are afraid of, going to the doctor, going to the hospital. They're terrified because they know the statistics. Last November... We had some great meetings up in Toronto, and I always love to read their papers because when you get off the airplane, I always get their newspapers. The first thing, they're always talking about the medical system. The doctor, as you know him, to mark its 35th anniversary, the U.S. magazine entitled Foreign Policy, it's kind of one of these political foreign policy magazines, comes out monthly, been around for a long time, Ask a group of think tank people at universities to study and identify which ideas, values, and institutions will disappear in the next 35 years. Guess which is number one. Guess which one's going to disappear for sure, for sure, in 35 years.